Hello and welcome to this pipeline breakdown of multiple shots environment composting. I'm Kirill Plashakov, the visual effects supervisor and producer. Today's class will be in a follow up from the desert scene class. I'm just trying to make sure that I explained everything I did, everything useful, everything you can use in your pipeline. And I'm gonna explain you in details the technique to rapidly compose a whole scene of the same environment, replacing this environment with the desert. So if you look into this shot, for example, which is an interior shot of the diner, inside of the diner, I mean, we will see that the nodes here are doing absolutely the same thing, just the camera and the Houdini render is changed. And the same HDRI here, although it is not seen at all, but in case of right connection of merge nodes here, it was copied here. <laughs> although it is not seen at all here through the windows and not seen at all through this camera, actually. So you see that this stack of nodes of the actual render from Houdini are looking very similar because they are absolutely the same. They are just copy here and sometimes a little bit more work is done on them depending on the shot for example here this log was scaled and this post was done here and in the place where it was here so it all was rendered from the same scene the main point of this pipeline is that all your cameras will be in the same scene so you can see there's a lot of cameras here and all these cameras were layouted here manually for these shots. They are static. So I just like took the source and just layouted the camera here according to where the diner is. I could understand where to put my camera and I set the camera lens to the lens which were actually on the camera when it was shooting the shot on the actual set. So this shot is OD and we can find its camera here by selecting it here. Here we go. So uh, this is the view from the camera in Houdini and I have a separate mantra node for it. Here we go. Here I have it. So I was rendering them through my render farm. So here's just uh, the same setup for all the cameras and the passes I need are selected in all the mantra nodes. So crypto Matte is absolutely the same, just the same passes, the same variants of render for different cameras. So in Nuke, I could just comp this all one time in one shot to just make this spell. So I will show you how I've color corrected all this. Actually, you've seen something similar in the master shot of the desert. And you can see the similarity of the nodes that were used there. Even the values of the gamma and saturation are absolutely the same the values of blur the same mask used here i'm just copying things and just if i go down the stream here you can see that this is being merged with the hdri here and hdri is processed in new completely hdri is just used for the background there and then it is being out here and sometimes some stuff is being added specifically for the shot but this whole stack of nodes is like ctrl c and ctrl v copy it here and connect it through the same merge nodes they are absolutely the same may look a little bit different but they are absolutely the same so actually if you even take the render from here take the render and the camera i mean like if you take the render and the camera of the different shot and go here you'll find that if you replace them here you will see that almost everything will work this black areas are here because we also should replace the cryptomat which is in the separate file and this a way of uh, copying uh, uh, corrections and parts of the script allowed to rapidly correct the whole scene for example sometimes the director like wanted me to so the director wanted to add this speed limit into every shot and all i had to do is to create it in one of the shots put it into the same scene into the same position and render it in the same place merging it with the same merge node in every shots 
So let's say we want the sand to be more saturated in every shot. So we're gonna find the sand's saturation node, which is here from connected from the skier that is selecting the sand. Yeah, and make it more saturated like that. Kind of a while and color correction for the sand, but <laughs> it is seen through the screen recording. So I'm just copying the saturation node from here, going to my other desert shot here and finding the saturation node here see the old value of it is absolutely the same and i'm copying it here saving the old one and you can see that i effectively can change this way the saturation of the sand in every shot of the scene throw them all into the render farm and into the render queue and render the whole scene out color correcting all the sand in the scene so this is the point of making all cameras in one scene you see the same color for the scent now so yeah that is how you will do all the corrections for the whole scene i will change it back to normal saturation so that i will not get confused it was 074 here 0 0.74 and if you look into the shot on which we already did the breakdown this shot you can see that absolutely the same nodes are here absolutely the same values are here in the saturation so this is just a copied part that is working fine here because rendering is from the same scene with the same settings of mantra and everything works just fine here by copying sometimes you just have to do a little bit more work for the specific shot but you should connect it the way you can copy the part of the script that is being copied yeah so one thing that is different though in this parallaxing shot the only parallaxing shot of uh, the desert scene everything is mapped on to its proxy geometry to properly parallax from the movement of the camera that is moving here but in the static shots nothing is uh, going through the scanline render node because uh, it is not needed it's just a static background but sometimes when the camera is rotating like in this one when we see the background moving there the camera is tracked as a nodal pan camera and the sphere is used to map the render on it like that so the camera just rotates here and reveals this part of the desert that is seen so i can show you another shot with rotating camera so here's kind of a more hard example so we see the car moving here and the guys going out there were a lot of rotoscope there here we go that's the end of the shot so this is the source file we managed to pull the green screen up here like that and and sway i was able to key them out there were no time There's the green screen is standing there because i've put the uh, plank there <laughs> Just a plank holding the green screen there a little bit extended so that was a little bit easier to extract windows. Yeah, so this is the rotating camera, so it is mapped on the sphere. All right, this time it is not mapped on the sphere, it is tracked by a point tracker. So uh, when the camera has straight horizon, uh, you will basically be able to track it with one tracker, and there is a class where I I've shown you how you can solve the camera with one tracker actually I did here the same thing I just didn't use the camera here I used the tracker movement so it is tracking the points from the different parts of the shot and getting the rotation of the camera which is then applied to this background yeah so that's the background which is tracked through the point tracker it is very slow and the motion blur is also done through this transform Note. As simple as this. Yeah. All right. And for the rest of the class, let's quickly break down the work that was done in these two static shots here and here. And then I'll be sure that I've shown you everything that I've done in this scene. So, uh, uh, King, we are denoising the footage before this and extracting the guys, extracting them, getting the alpha, copying it here. So with multiple uh, keyer nodes, sometimes keying the parts of the car 
car which are not in front of the green screen see extracting the parts of the car to not rotoscope them then merging everything together merging all the key together sometimes the static masks are used to extract things like road and stuff that is needed for the desert like that going on all right extending the road here it's absolutely the same way in every shot with transform nodes sometimes the roto paint is used to extend it adding it there and here comes our background which goes from here absolutely the same operations i've already shown you in the main breakdown so there's no flare for the sun here so only the mask with crate is used to show it eye distortion is doing some heat distortion mapping the mists through the depth channel defocus a little bit of dust just mapped on everything and put an under our foreground like that so this post is extended here just a little bit let's see where it comes from yeah here we go here it is the post yeah here we go here it is but let's see how it is done yeah so two images of it taken from the different angles the images of this same lock here and then corner pin and extend that like that so it's just on a different format that's why it looks this way but this really long here it's going up out of the frame here now a color corrected and put on there very easy very easy that's how this shot was done let's see another shot so here the guys are going inside of the diner like that so the source file look so here i'm gonna show you a pretty easy technique to key the transparent glasses so you can just take the key light like that so with one note you can key out all this stuff you can just select the color the green color you need let's set it to intermediate result and select it here like that and then if we connect it to the core like that so obviously there's a little bit more masks is needed here but i was going to show you the way you can restore the transparent areas of the glass so you can see there is a little bit of hole here where we've uh, selected the color because the key light thinks that this is the actual green screen and if we just dim down its gain a little bit we can restore all the details transparent details of the glasses that it's needed so sometimes uh, you can use two key lights to select different parts of the shot if the light intensity is different there but this is the way you can uh, forget about plusing stuff and multiplying stuff after you key each stuff so just restoring all the details with one node sometimes it works uh, on things like fine details like uh, hair I uh, hope I will have a shot to show you how this technique works on the details instead of transparent things but the best way to use it is on the transparent things because this is the most logical way to use it let's see what i'm doing here and this is better than clipping things i don't want to lose any detail all right so we are keying it out copying the alpha here and putting our background under this foreground so the background looks like this there's a little bit of multiplication and plusing going on here but i guess sometimes your inside perfectionist makes you do this and here is the background very nice car remodeled bonneville by our modeler guy and we are putting it under this foreground here plusing the grain back and cropping things and to the render farm all right so this class was kind of an additional class for the main desert compositing breakdown as always you can find the project files on my patreon if you want the complete breakdown of the desert compositing you can watch the class that was made for the main shot and all the project files are on patreon for this so thank you very much for watching i'm kirill plashakov have a nice day goodbye